All right, so today I've got something really special for you. We're gonna be unboxing one of the hottest new lightweight gaming monsters on the market today. Before we get started, I want to extend a huge shout out and thank you to Lamzu for sending me this product to unbox and review for your viewing pleasure. It's always exciting to get my hands on the latest tech and share my thoughts with you. I recently unboxed and reviewed the Lamzu Thorn on my page. If you haven't seen those videos, go ahead and check them out. The links are in the upper right hand corner. In my opinion, it's one of the very best gaming mice on the market today and for general use, not just for gaming. But let's get back to the Maya here. Initial impressions are key and I'm impressed by the build quality, the Juano switches and the lightweight feel of this mouse. It feels incredibly light yet sturdy and the shell just doesn't flex at all. It really has this wow factor that sets it apart from other gaming mice on the market right now. It's such a sleek design, the packaging looks awesome, and it's clear that Lamzu puts a lot of thought into the presentation of their products. Even the USB receivers just look beautiful. They not only perform well, but are showpieces for your desktop setup as well. So here it is compared to the Lamzu Thorn, which is an ergo shaped mouse. This one is an ambidextrous mouse. They are similar in size, but you can see the contours are a little different on each of these. So even though the shape profiles are a little different, they do feel sort of on the same plane. Now comparing it to the Beast X Mini, it is a little larger than the Beast X, but it feels kind of like a filled out version of the Beast X, while the Beast X feels like a skeletonized Mini. You can see that it's a little smaller than the X-Lite V2 standard size. The hump profile is a lot different as well. The V2 is favored toward the rear, while the Maya is more balanced toward the middle. It's closer in size to the X-Lite V2 Mini, but again, very different shape profiles. The X-Lites are more fingertip profile, while the Maya feels more like a claw grip profile. Comparing it to the Dragonfly MOBA F1, the F1 has more rounded features and is more bulby, if I can use that word. So you can kind of see the difference here. It is a bit smaller than the F1 as well. Here it is against the OG, the G Pro Superlight. The Superlight is a lot larger. It has more of a filled out shell in my opinion. They look pretty similar side by side, but in hand they feel vastly different. The Attack Shark X3 is very similar in size, probably the closest one in size to the Maya. The button profile on the Maya just feels like it sits lower though. Here it is against the Darmo Shark M3. The M3 is probably the largest mouse I have. As you can see, there's quite a bit of a size difference here. Shape profile and in-hand feel are completely different as well on these two mice. After unboxing, I immediately put it to the test with a brief gaming session. And I must say, I was thoroughly impressed. Its feather light design made movement feel effortless, creating an unparalleled sense of connection between my intentions and actions that occurred. The best way I can describe it is, it felt like I was just pointing my finger rather than moving a mouse around. In an era where fantastic lightweight mice with premium components like a PAW3395, you know, TTC gold scroll wheels, all the good stuff can be snagged for under $30. Recommending a mouse priced over $100 requires something truly exceptional. Yet, the Maya surpasses expectations with its meticulous attention to detail, stunning design, rigid shell, and a coating that strikes the perfect balance between grippy and velvety smooth. I don't know how they do it, but it's amazing. The Juano switches sound and feel great. They just exude elegance, and it just feels like it's in a level above these $30 to $50 mouses that I just talked about, which are good in their own right. But the Maya has this premium wow factor that really sets it apart as a definitive step above the rest. So would I recommend this mouse? Absolutely. If you're seeking a top tier lightweight gaming mouse, especially for ambidextrous users, the Lamzu Maya is one of the finest options available in my opinion. With its exceptional features and design, I wholeheartedly endorse the Lamzu Maya for the reasons I've discussed earlier. So that's all I got for you today. Thank you for tuning in. I truly hope you found this content helpful, informative, or maybe even entertaining. 
Your time is precious, and I deeply appreciate you spending some of it here with me. Each view, comment, and like brings me one step closer to my dream of creating content full time, and for that, I'm incredibly grateful. If you enjoyed what you saw, please consider subscribing and hitting that bell for future updates. I'll keep grinding away, and I look forward to having you join me on this journey. Until next time, take care, and I'll see you in the next one.